Welcome to iLecture Online. Now that we're done with line integrals, we're ready to attack Green's theorem. Well, we don't really need to attack it, we just need to understand it. And there's a big relationship between line integrals and Green's theorem, and we have to keep that in mind, otherwise Green's theorem doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's go back what we've learned so far with line integrals. Let's say that we have a vector field that's defined in the xy plane as a function uh, related to xy or dependent upon xy in the i direction and a function dependent on the xy in the j direction. So there's a magnitude in the y direction, a magnitude in the j direction, which depends on the position in the xy plane where you're considering the vector field. And if we assume this function of x and y in the i direction to be p and the function of x and y in the j direction is q. Now some books will use p and q, some books will use m and n, it doesn't really matter whatever letters you want to use. So if we then assume this to be the vector field, then we have a position. This is called the position vector at any point in the xy plane, a certain distance in the x direction and a certain distance in the y direction. And then if we take the differential of that, dr, this can then be expressed as dx in the i direction plus dy in the j direction. And now going back to the definition of a line integral here, we take the vector field and we dot it with the position vector, or at least the derivative or differential of the position vector, which then looks like this. We have the, what we call the vector field dotted with the differential of the position vector, and we get this expression right here. Now that's really important because this expression is what we're going to use in Green's theorem. And you have to remember that this comes from this concept right here. If you don't, it's going to get kind of confusing. You go, well, what in the world are they doing? And something doesn't seem to be right. As long as you remember that this comes from the concept of the line integral using a vector field and a position vector, then it makes a lot more sense. Now to Green's theorem. So here's the definition of Green's theorem. We take that line integral that we just derived or defined, and according to Green, this was equal to the double integral over the region enclosed by the line integral. Now what we're saying here, enclosed meaning we have to have a line integral completely around the region. For example, here we have some examples on the board. Let's say we have a region called R, and we can then, assuming that there's a vector field here, and then we do a line integral around that region. So when we do a line integral around the region, which is defined by this, and the vector field defining the xy plane there, then we can say that is equal to the double integral over the region, over the area of the region, and what's inside here is defined by the partial derivative of, with respect to x, of q minus the partial derivative with respect to y of p. In other words, what Green said was that if you try to do a line integral like this, and it could be quite difficult as you've experienced in the previous, um, previous videos, you can make it easier for yourself by simply integrating over the area of the region where the integrand is defined by this quantity right here. Quite often, it is much harder to do this than it is to do this. And we'll see plenty of examples of that, and you'll agree with that. Now, there's one more thing we need to realize, that if you integrate in a counterclockwise direction, that's considered a positive orientation. If you integrate in a clockwise direction, that's considered a negative orientation. So in order for this to be equal to this, according to Green's theorem, we have to integrate in a counterclockwise direction. Otherwise, you'll be off by a sign. The one will be the negative of the other. So that's what we mean by Green's theorem. Remember that the left side is definitely part of a line integral defined by a vector field and a position vector, so that when we integrate around a line integral, if we do a line integral, it is relative to a vector field, and then Green's theorem makes a lot of sense. Now there's a lot of other applications for Green's theorem, and you'll see some of those later, and then in later videos or later sessions, There'll be opportunities for us to look at all the various things we can do with Green's theorem, but now we'll just confine ourselves to the basic concept and some good examples of what Green's theorem is. And that's how it's done.